On this channel, we are trying to get to the bottom of why dogs are being pushed so aggressively on us, especially pit bull type dogs. Everywhere we look, the message is shoved down our throats that these are great dogs. Uh, and if we disagree, we are labeled racists, scum of the earth, terrible people if we don't agree. In spite of all of the evidence that these dogs are doing the most damage by far when it comes to serious attacks on people, innocent people, unprovoked attacks on humans as well as pets and livestock, these mutants are doing the most damage by far, these pit bull type dogs. Uh, so why are they being pushed so aggressively on us? And why are pit bull bans being reversed. Why do people want to reverse these bans that were in place to protect the public? Why are police, our authorities doing nothing to protect us from these dangerous, unpredictable mutants? They are often the best, sweetest, quote, loving dogs for many, many years until they suddenly go berserk and rip someone's face off for no reason. In my video about the pit bull lobby, we explored who is behind this propaganda what is driving it and a number of people have said to me that your average pit bull owner that owns a family pit bull is allowing dog fighters to hide in plain sight and whenever i would hear this i would kind of just brush it off like nah, that sounds kind of fringe conspiracy theorist crazy talk you know i wouldn't think too much of it but uh, someone left a uh, comment on my re most recent video uh, gray greyhound asked, my question about dogfighting is this, it is supposedly illegal, right? So tell me why it is allowed for dogfighters slash game dog breeders to be present online. There are countless game dog forums, Facebook pages, websites of game dog yards or breeders accessible to anyone. If authorities wanted to, they could get these people easily. Just Google game dog kennels near me. You will be surprised how easy it is to get into this blood sport. So why are the authorities not doing anything about it? Why don't they care? Are they in it too? That would explain why they don't do a thing against these mutants and for public safety. Oh, and these websites all say on the front page, we don't sell dogs for illegal purposes. Yeah, right. That is how you know that it is exactly what they do and just pay attention to their code language. This really got me thinking, and I started Googling. Well, you know, I, I talked to you guys a bit about dog fighting in the past. I touched upon it uh, in my uh, Pitbull Lobby video, actually. Uh, and I, you know, we, we learned that there are an estimated tens of thousands of people involved in dog fighting just in the USA. And it generates a lot of money. Uh, there have been seizures of more than $500,000 at dogfight raids. It's not unusual for twenty dollars to $30,000 to change hands in a single fight. We're talking about a lot of money here. And so maybe it's not so crazy to think that these people with a lot of money are paying people to go online and, and uh, circulate this message about how wonderful these dogs are so that dog fighters and people who breed these dogs for fighting can hide in amongst these people who are just keeping them as pets. I had a look online, uh, a brief search. This is the first thing that popped up in the game Pitbull Kennels on Facebook. I found this. You could see that these are some real degenerates. Look at these. These are the types of vile pictures they're posting on their page. Uh, you can tell that these people are just scum, low lives. Uh, and um, so their page is just full of pictures of the bloodlines that their puppies are descended from. And all of this, look at this this writing. I don't know what any of this means. This is like cult language. Uh, they have their own lingo, their own language. Game bred, by the way, is uh, it, it means th that the animal is a good fighter. It wants to continue fighting when other dogs would give up. Uh, these dogs are, and, and they're proud of it, and they state it proudly that they are breeding these dogs to be good fighters. 
This is right there in the open. Uh, and they have their own language, like I said. I'm going to put some links in the description. These, you know, they had pictures of, oh, dogs that are champions. Well, there are different ways you could think about this. They, they could be a champion in the dog show ring, right? When you have, like, you know, those shows where they bring all different breeds and a well, champion wins. But it could also mean a dog that has won a certain number of fights. Now, the pictures they are putting of these dogs' uh, ancestors, right, these bloodlines, these pictures show dogs that look ripped up. They have scars in some cases. They look mangled. They look like fighting dogs. They look like they are in these yards with, you know, just, they were obviously bred for fighting. And these people behind the page are just keeping up that tradition. And I don't think these people care about dogs. If they cared about dogs, they would not proudly display these pictures of these fighting dogs covered in scars and these huge, heavy chains around their necks. And these dogs look abused. And, and they're posting one picture like this after another. And, and the dogs that are featured are always pulling on their leads, on their collars, choking themselves. Talked about this in my last video. They're all in a state of hyper arousal, just ready, dying to just break free and, and run. Compare and contrast that to this dog, this show dog, right? Slack on the lead. They're not pulling because they were not bred to be in a constant state of hyper arousal. Uh, but, you know, that... Facebook page was not the only one. Just on Facebook alone, I found a whole bunch with a lot more members. The first one had like 1.4 thousand or something. Look at this, 11.7K. And in this site, it's a closed group, so I can't see all the pictures, but to me, it looks very similar to the one I just talked about. Look at this, another one. Look at what they're, uh, this is their cover photo. Right again, the bloodlines they're describing the dogs they're you know they're breeding puppies, and they, this is how they're describing the puppies' ancestors devast it's cut off, but dogs with a devastating bite, good wrestlers, incredible stamina, look at this killing machine, their ancestor was a killing machine, oh look at that here's another group twelve point two thousand members, same kind of thing, game dog, and look at the description of the group, no dog man left behind, we just looked at their code words, right, a dog man is a professional trainer or handler in the dog fighting business, it's just like Grey Greyhound said, my viewer, who said that uh, they will state that they are not involved in any illegal activities, I think just, just saying that, it reminds me of these websites where you go to buy like magic psychedelic mushrooms and they will say oh yeah my mushrooms are sold only for educational purposes or whatever they'll put a little disclaimer so they don't get into legal trouble right but you know they're up to no good here look at this red rum kennels who has seen the shining right red rum is murder backwards evil people here guys they are breeding these dogs for fighting look game bred kennels look at their profile picture Look at this. They're proud of this a dog attacking a wild boar, right? Oh, such animal lovers they are. This reminds me very much of something I Hate Dogs said in one of his videos when he drew attention to the fact that people, almost 150,000 people liked this video of a family pit bull that was trained to attack. These pit fanatics are always going on about how it's all in how you raise them and how if you train your dog to attack, then yeah, it's going to be vicious. They, they say that they are against teaching your dog to be aggressive. They are hypocrites. They love it. Look how many people love this. They love to watch dogs be aggressive. These people are not right in the head. They love aggression. So I'm going to link you to this article about dog fighting and the street fighting versus professional dog fighting. Uh, they say that street dog fighting is growing very fast. Up to 100,000 people in the United States are taking part in it. Uh, and they talk about how it's a highly organized subculture. And um, it's really something that is, like I said, generating tons of money. These people are making a lot of money, not only by participating in the fighting itself, but by breeding the dogs for the fighting. Uh, you know, they have their own language. It's a real cult that is 
heavily financed. These people have lots of money. Now look at this. I was reading about what they call Cajun rules, which are the rules covering all aspects of dogfighting that were created in the 1950s by a police chief. Now, if the police were involved in dogfighting back in the 1950s, who's to say that they are not involved in it today? Now, I'm not a betting person, but if I were, I would wager that they are, because that would explain why they are doing nothing to protect the public from the presence of these unpredictable killing machines, right? You know, when you call the police, when I called the police and I said, oh, there's a pit bull in my yard loose, did they care? Did they do anything? No. And they're reversing these bans, these pit bull bans. They are making our communities more dangerous by allowing the presence of these dogs. Canada is importing them by the hundreds every year, unregulated, unwanted pit bulls from America with uncertain histories. I mean, it's crazy. You you know, any rational person would scratch their head and go like, what the hell is going on here? How is this possible? Well, this would explain it, wouldn't it? If our police, our authorities, our government officials are all involved in dogfighting, of course, they're going to want average citizens owning pit beasts because that way the dog breeders that are breeding the dogs for dogfighting can indeed hide in plain sight. They look just like any other pit bull owner. So after doing this research today and coming across these pages and websites, I I, I have to say I'm quite convinced that this is happening, that these dog fighters are hiding in plain sight because everyone is getting a pit bull nowadays. Why? Because they're seeing memes everywhere. They are being bombarded from all sides with this message that pit bulls are wonderful dogs. These dogs, these blocky headed mutants are appearing in freaking shows, movies. They're showing up at the video game conferences on stage for no fucking reason. They just appear for whatever, you know, they're being placed there to give the public the message that these are great dogs. I'm thoroughly convinced of this. We live in a very, very sick world. And I think the world is so sick that it is difficult for most of us to accept how sick it actually is. And I think that's why we tend to dismiss a lot of information or we don't even entertain it. Like myself, when people would say these things to me and talk about the dog fighting stuff, I would just go like, ah, no way, that's just too crazy. But I think that was my way of protecting myself. It's really, really difficult to to admit that maybe those who are in place to protect us are not doing their jobs. They don't care about us at all. Uh, That's really frightening to face and not easy at all. But I think I'm at that point, guys, uh, that uh, I, I really, really think that people with a lot of money and a lot of power are fooling us, manipulating us. We're evolving. I really do believe after reading that uh, Steven Pinker book I mentioned in one of my previous videos about how uh, humanity is becoming less violent with each generation. It doesn't appear to be the case, but it actually is the case. When you look back in history and you realize all of the barbaric shit we did, uh, it, it was way worse than what we're doing today. We're still doing a lot of barbaric, horrible stuff. But... uh I mean, read that book. We have come a long way, actually, even though it doesn't appear to be the case. And I really do think that we're going to continue along this trajectory and we are going to become less violent, less barbaric with time. And we're evolving. And that is why I say the future is dog free.